La 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 lava, ch 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 chicken. Steve's lava chicken. It's the wait. <laughs> um, this was recording. Damn, my bad. <laughs> I was just um, you know, doing something. Uh, anyway, welcome back. Today we're diving into one of the most important concepts in Python and programming in general: object-oriented programming, or Hoop. Hoop lets you write reusable, modular and scalable code by organizing it into classes and objects. I'll be honest, this was a topic I struggled with when I started. It's super important in game development and while the basics are easy to understand, using Hoop effectively takes some practice. I personally lean more towards a functional approach because I find it easier. But I can't deny that Hoop is incredibly useful for writing clean and efficient code. So I've put my head into it, done the research, and now I'm ready to teach you the best way I can. We'll break it all down, what classes and objects are, how inheritance helps you reuse code, how polymorphism makes your programs more flexible. By the end of this video, you won't just understand OOP. Yes, this is the right way to say it. Hope you don't treat it by the wrong name now. You'll actually be able to apply OOP in your own projects. Let's get started. Object-oriented programming, or OOP, is a way of structuring code around the idea of objects. These objects are built using classes, which are like blueprints. Let's say you have a blueprint for a car. That blueprint is your class. But the actual cars you build from it, those are your objects or instances. Here's what that looks like in Python. With this blueprint, you can now create as many cars as you want. That will be pretty useful in real life. Each car is its own object, with its own brand and model. This is the foundation of OOP, using reusable templates to create organized, modular pieces of your program. It makes your code more readable, scalable and much easier to manage, as things grow. Let's take a closer look at classes and objects. A class is a blueprint that defines attributes, data, and methods, functions. Here's an example. Here in it is the constructor method. It initializes the object's attributes when you create it. It's basically just telling the class, hey, start with this information. Let's create a dog object. The bark method is a behavior specific to the dog class, and you can call it on any dog object. Inheritance allows you to create new classes based on existing ones, reusing code and extending functionality. For example, now let's create a dog class that inherits from animal. If you still want to include the original behavior from the parent class, you can use super to call it. For example, you could call super.speak before or after adding new behavior. That way, your subclass extends the functionality instead of fully replacing it. When you create a dog object, it can use methods from both the animal class and its own. This is a powerful way to build class hierarchies and avoid duplicating code. You define shared behavior once in the base class and then customize or extend it in the subclasses. Polymorphism allows objects of different classes to be treated as if they belong to the same class. This is especially useful when working with methods that share the same name across classes. For example, let's add another class. Now both dog and cat share the speak method, but their behavior is different. You can use polymorphism like this. The speak method behaves differently depending on the object, allowing you to write more flexible and dynamic code. You don't need to know the exact type of each object, just that it has the method you want to call. We've already used classes when creating custom exceptions in our error handling video, for example. This custom exception is just another example of how classes allow you to extend Python's functionality and make it more specific to your needs. Alright, enough theory, let's bring this to life. Let's make a simple library system. Here's how you can manage books and users with OOP.
Now you can create users and books, then simulate borrowing and returning books. This is just a starting point, but it shows how OOP helps you model real-world systems in a clean and structured way. You're not just writing code, you're building something that behaves like the world around us. You could even turn this into a game. Like a stealth library simulator, where you return overdue books without being noticed. Game of the year, maybe. Buggy mess, also maybe. Let's find out. I'll vibe code it over a weekend, no big deal. Then spend the next 12 months fixing one typo that breaks everything. And obviously if you forget to return a book, there's a hidden boss fight, you know? Realistic. Before you know it, it's a full online inventory system with achievements, a leaderboard, patch notes. <sighs> 14 bugs, 3 unresolved to-dos and one mystery function called please fix this that I'm way too scared to delete. Love that journey for me. Today we explore the fundamentals of object-oriented programming. Classes, objects, inheritance and polymorphism. OOP is the backbone of many modern applications and understanding it will take your Python skills to the next level. Now it's your turn, try building your own class-based system, like a school with students and teachers or a shopping cart. Experiment with inheritance and polymorphism to see how they play out in real-world scenarios. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and share your thoughts in the comments. In the next episode, we'll dive into even more interesting Python content. Or JavaScript. Have you seen my JavaScript series? Go watch it. Happy coding and I'll see you La 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 lava, cha 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 chicken. Steve's lava chicken, yeah, it's tasty as hell. Ooh, mama's eaten, now you're ringing the bell. Crispy and juicy, now you're having a snack. Oh, super spicy, it's a lava tea.